Yes, yes, people, welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV. I've still got my hat on after last night. I'm still freezing from being at the women's game last night. Not really. Need a haircut. Get one tomorrow. Anyways, not yet to talk about my haircuts, my hats, and whatever else I've got going on. We're here to talk about Newcastle United's new sponsorship. Yes, yes, it's been in the rumour mill for a while now that, that a company from the Middle East would be getting involved with Newcastle United as soon as we got taken over by Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia, obviously from the Middle East, there was always going to be intentions and rumours and speculation that one of their companies or an, an investment group or someone somewhere in the Middle East would be getting involved in Newcastle United because they want to get Saudi Arabia spread out there. They want the message and the word to evolve Saudi Arabia. They want to you know, work with Newcastle United, get their brand out there, get PIF out there, showcase Saudi Arabia and how it's changing and evolving and it... You know, I think they will want to become like a tourist attraction. That's why Newcastle United have been over there now a couple of times. They'll want to turn, just like Qatar, want to turn, you know, Doha into Dubai. Saudi Arabia will be looking to go along the same route. And I think we'll see that in Saudi Arabia in the next 10, 20 years. You'll see a lot of investment in their cities and a lot of investment in other football clubs. You know, Amanda Stavely said that. She said they're looking at several teams across Europe and in the likes of Australia to, you know, public investment get involved with. So we know they're obviously involved in Newcastle United. One way they want to get involved further is to become the main shirt sponsor. So it is going to be Bye Bye Fun 88. There it is there. Stretch your neck back, Matty lad. Fun 88, in case you forgot what it looks like. You know, it's going to be Bye Bye Them. It's going to be out Fun 88. We knew that already, right? If you didn't, their contract does expire in the summer. So Fun 88 is over. They've been at Newcastle United now for several years. And it's the end of an era. In that term, you know, good because we need to grow. We need to grow, and you know, the funny they were paying pennies under Mike Ashley's tenure. Pennies in terms of comparison to other Premier League clubs of what they get for main shirt sponsors, and especially how many shirts Newcastle United fans buy and the club sells and the money they can generate from that. But well, I suppose during the whole Mike Ashley era, had that boycott the club shop and everything, didn't we? But you'll still see loads of people buying the new kits every year. So funny it is is gone because like I say the owners want a new name they want bigger uh, revenue and that way it increases FFP we you know you've got to get these big brand deals these big sponsorships in to combat financial fair play and we've seen it already and it's been announced at noon the shirt sleeve sponsor that's not on this one so I can't lift my neck up and show you that but you know it's all over the the home away and third kits this season the yellow square noon the Middle Eastern company they are extending their deal to next season, so you will see those as the shirt sleeve sponsor once again. And uh, you know, they're they're putting up the money. They're seven and a half million a year, Noon, whereas Funny at Eight paid nearly half of that to be the main sponsor, where Noon are paying double just to be on the sleeve. So that shows in comparison the bargain that Funny at Eight were getting, the money that Newcastle need to drive and generate up more and, and build, really build these commercial deals so we can evolve as a club, grow. And like I say, most importantly for us fans, what we want to see and what Eddie Howe wants is big name players, better players, money being spent on the club, infrastructure, stadium, training ground, on the pitch, off the pitch, and brand deal sponsorships are the way for to do that. Look, you see that all the big clubs, you see the training grounds sponsored by someone. You see, my native have got different sponsors for fucking everything. They've got different sponsors for the training bibs, the training jumpers, the home kits, you know, loads of stuff they've got going on. The training grounds... Millions, and that's what you need because it generates millions, and that's how you get away with FFP. So we've got all the people in the right places now. You know, like said, Darren Eel, Silverstone, uh, many people working hard behind the scenes now uh, to really revolutionise Newcastle United since this takeover. And by one of the ways doing that is sorting out the main shirt sponsor. So you can see in these images here yeah, some class kits designed by NUFC Concept Kits on Twitter. Shout him out and go check them out. He puts out loads out all the time, and there's some absolutely unreal. Designs then. I tell you what, I'll put them forward to the club as well. I tell you what, I'll, I'll show them. I'll show them the next time I see her. Eh? Get this, mate. Do you know what I mean? Because they're unreal. And they're always better, these kits that people design um, at home than, than what these big companies get paid billions of pounds to. Some 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 idiot on a ballroom somewhere, you know what I mean? At Castori, at Puma, at Adidas, whoever it will be. It's generic templates. Fuck it, we'll give them that. Well, Dortmund have got that. We'll give, we'll give them that. You know what I mean? No. Make it good. Make it like these, because these are sensational. Now, it is worth noting that, obviously, some of these designs that I've shown you, I'll just keep overloading them on the screen, are 
Adidas. They have got Adidas on there, but you'll see some that are Castori as well. Because it's worth noting that Castori will still be here next season. Newcastle have and are continuing to work hard behind the scenes to buy out Castori. Adidas have been at their stadium. They've watched a couple of Newcastle games, the representatives from there. They want to get back involved in Newcastle United. Newcastle want a new sponsor for all the reasons I've just said why they're getting a new main shirt sponsor. So they're looking to change, they're looking to switch things up because just like Funny and Acre Story are only paying a few million pounds as well, which is just for a Premier League club and hopefully a soon to be club competing in European competitions is nothing. But Castori got that deal in the Rashley because he'd take anything he could. And you know, they're really not going to leave easily other Castori because especially if we do get in Europe, then what Castori's getting spread across Europe. You know, I mean, it's getting seen in more countries and more places on more TV screens. So that's perfect for them, exactly what they wanted. Um, probably not what they expected when they first took over Newcastle. Um, Castori, when they got involved, thinking that that would be the case. So they've, they've hit gold on that one. But uh, Newcastle are trying to get them out of there. And, you know, they want a Nike and Adidas. They want a, a bigger, more global, recognised brand. Um, where I think people will be more inclined to wear kits, especially abroad, you know, Africa, US. If they see the Nike tick on it, they're all over it. Adidas, the three stripes. They're looking at your story, they're thinking, what the fucking hell is that? Do you know what I mean? And no disrespect to story, obviously I bought some of the stuff. Um, I know a lot of people have had complaints about them, about deliveries, about people receiving Rangers shirts instead of Newcastle shirts and, and, and vice versa. All these different clubs that are sponsored by Castori now. But for me, I, I think they're decent. I like the material. Um, I've never had any problems with them. And I like the designs. I think this, this season's three kits are all lush, to be honest with you. I like the home away and the third kit. But... Um, Obviously, I would much prefer Adidas to come back. For these kind of designs, or a Nike, I would be interested in switching out and going for a swoosh. But uh, yeah, you know, the designs that have been on the screen there, loads of rumours. Yeah, Castori will be there next season. I think the designs have already been done for next season. I haven't seen them, but it's March now. They'll be getting released. They'll always get leaked around May time. They'll come out June. So they might even wear them at the end of May, don't they? Sometimes on the last, last game of the season. So yeah, that'll be the case. Castori will be here next year. And then hopefully the owners can get a deal struck where they can get, get them out for the following year. But the main focus of this video, I've waffled on now for what, seven minutes or so without actually talking about it. Saudia. So, Fly Saudia, we've seen them already. St. James Park, they've been there along the, along the touchline, the electronic boards. You know, they've been there doing the advertising deals for last year when they went to Saudi Arabia. You've seen the, the, the Saudia staff at St. James Park all dressed up nicely, getting photos and videos done. Saudi flew Newcastle United squads out to Saudi Arabia for that, that trip back last year in December, wasn't it? So they did that, and now they are looking very likely, according to Football Insider 247, I think it is, and loads of other people saying that Saudi will become that new main shirt sponsor. And is, is there anything to go by on these kit designs? It looks tidy, very tidy. Look at the press will be loving it. You'll see the usual people come out of the woodworks and say, oh, look at that Saudi on the front of an English club. Seen it all the time, mate. Got Fly Emirates at Arsenal for years. Stadium's named after them. Etihad. Etihad for Man City. The stadium, the training ground, the pitches, the kits, the lot. All Etihad. Now it's been said. They're, they're you know, Middle Eastern base. So, yeah, it shouldn't be an issue. These these people will probably try and make it an issue, but I'm fine with it. Again, if they're investing back in the club, the city, everything, making everything better for us as a region, no problems with it whatsoever. And I think it looks tidy. I like the logo, it's simple, I like the font, looks good, looks clean. Much better than Funny at 8, because Funny at 8 there, with the with the Chinese writing there, it's, it's just awful, isn't it? I mean, look at that. It's just it's just too much, it's too big. It's too big, that. You know what I mean? It takes over the shit, whereas the Saudi is just clean, like that. If it looks like that, obviously these are just concept designs, but you'd imagine that it would be along along those lines. So, Saudi, I'm all for it. And again, like I see, they're going to be putting in a lot more money. The, the deal is going to be worth a lot more money. So we can then invest that back into the club. So winner, winner for me. Absolute winner, winner. It's also been announced that PIF want to keep the Saudi-themed away kit next year. So next year they want to continue with the white and green format. So they want to keep that going because they want to grow Newcastle United in the biggest club in the Middle East. Obviously they want it in Saudi Arabia. They want all the locals over there wearing Newcastle United kits. And they can't think of a better way to do that than obviously making it the colour of their national kits. And to be fair, I'm a big fan of that kit this year. I think it's great. I think it's lovely. I think it's smart. However, our record in it has been honking. We haven't won a game in that kit. So if some people are saying it's cursed and all that, uh, <laughs> which isn't ideal. Um, but yeah, they're going to continue. Maybe go green next year. Maybe go green and white, not white and green. Mix that up. Eh? Is that what Saudi Arabia has for the away kit, maybe, I think? So yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Just change the third kit, you know, make it a bit different. 
obviously don't do blue again, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that, and it makes sense, and if PIF want to do that, I've got no qualms with it, you know what I mean, I'm not asked if they want to do a, a white and green, a green and white kit again next year, I think it looks decent, so so roll it on, and get the journalists and everyone else uh, angry again as well, all them losers, you know what I mean, let them whinge, whinge their tits off all they want, if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to spend the time on, being asked about coloured kits, sure there's more pressing issues, in the world and that, but there's also rumours that Botswana travel were going to get involved. Now they're going to put up a big bid to be a part of a Premier League club next season, so that could be a sidetrack, but I would be surprised if it wasn't a Saudi Arabian or a more Middle Eastern themed investment, you know, a brand, a franchise, a company. But you never know. This isn't official, these are just several rumoured leaks, um, but it's looking that way, isn't it? Especially with Saudi already being on the pitch, the previous things they've already been doing the last few months. I would say it's 90% nailed on. But hey, Botswana, somewhere else, I couldn't give a crap. Greg's would be ideal. But uh, if not, then you know what I mean? I don't care as long as it looks all right, sounds all right. And we get new players in the door. Because we want to win the league, right? <laughs> Drop your comments below what you make the new shirt sponsor. Who would you have? Would you be happy with Sony? Yeah, all of that stuff. Subscribe to the Magpie Channel TV and enjoy yourself.